Welcome to a special edition of this program. This dude over here, he's one of the only people in the world who has been arrested more than me. I'm only at 49, man. I'm a little over 50. I don't I kind of lost count at 50. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Hello, friend. Welcome to a special edition of Voice of Resistance. This is one of my oldest friends in the world, Joe Slavenic. We have traveled all over the country together. How many? In the world. Oh, how many countries have we gone to? Oh, my goodness. Uh, probably another... Five or six. Yeah, right around there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and been to jail together. Uh, we were on... It was death row when we were in Houston. They, they stuck us in with the killers. Well, just for our protection, really. You right. know, keep us in solitary confinement. You they know? did. They, this, I'm not making this up, they, people. They didn't want us with the uh, general population. And right. we'd get our attorney coming in and then, you know, so that you and I could hang out together in the attorney room. Remember? Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, we are making a documentary on Operation Rescue. The working title of the documentary is Dragon Slayers, how the rescue movement overturned or led to the overturn of Roe versus Wade. And I thought Joe is in town because we're going through, Lord knows how many thousands of documents, pictures, video, magazines, newspapers. We've got tons of stuff in storage showing this incredible movement that went from 1987 to 1994. And then the federal government was able to break our back, but it went to seed. And those seeds ended up going into the political realm, and they were a key part of the election of Donald Trump and the appointment of the judges that led to the Dobbs decision. And there's many news outlets right now that are, and a documentary being made for HBO. Sony is just about to release a podcast series. And the premise of all of it is that Roe versus Wade would never have been overturned if it had not been for Operation Rescue. Yeah. So I just want to tell stories. I want, I, we want you to give money. I mean, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Why do we wow, want that? That's a little you know, unashamedly saying, right. you know. Well, the, the, this documentary, what are we going to spend on this thing? Well, well, just the first episode is a little over 95000 A little over 95000 For the, really the pilot yep. slash first episode. So, so we're, we're going to go for an episodic um, documentary, probably 10 episodes. It might be 8. It might be 12. That's part of why we're here together this week, me and you and Gary McCullough's coming in. Gary's coming in shortly. So we're going to look at what we have and try and map out where we want this to go. Yeah. And before we get too much into that, um, ladies and gentlemen, it's his birthday today. <laughs> so happy birthday, Randall. He's Thank I you. won't give out his age. Fifty four. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. And, and I'm twenty nine. So uh but happy birthday, bro. You I appreciate that. Thank you. Mom always loved you more than she loved me. Anyway. Um tell people why this is important from your perspective. I mean, you know, you you, you had a very successful business and then just went full time in the pro life movement. And succeeded in losing a lot of money. That's right. I met Randall Terry and lost everything. So that was fun. That was the fun part of my life. Um, now I think the importance of this video is really twofold. It was a historic um, event, Operation Rescue, for those years. I mean, it was something that never happened in the history of our country. It was the largest uh, peaceful civil disobedience movement in our country. We had, what, over 70,000 arrests. And if you compare that to the civil rights movement over 10 years of their kind of major part of their movement, uh, it, civil rights movement is still going on today, but um, they had about seven or 8,000 arrests. So it's significantly higher, the amount of people that were involved. And, and this story has to be told. It has to be in the history books. It just does. And the problem with who writes history is those who win write history. And up until you know, the Dobbs decision, we really haven't won. I mean, yeah. we saved a lot of babies, but we didn't win. Our goal was to overturn Roe. 
And so that's number one, that whole historical perspective. And then the, the second thing, which I think is equally or even more important, is to inspire the next generation. One of the things that Randall did in the early days of Operation Rescue is when you produced the Operation Rescue video. And all of us, you know, leaders around the country, we were using that to recruit uh, people, and it inspired people. And we hope that this documentary does that times 10. So that's really the thing. They inspire the next generation to end abortion in all states, you know, not just on the federal level, but make sure none of these other states like California, New York, that what they want to do has to stop. So hopefully that's the goal. You can go to <clears throat> www.givesendgo.com forward slash dragon slayers. If you can't remember all that, just go to randallterry.com. And right on the front page of our website is the five-minute promo piece explaining what we want to do. Oprah Winfrey was gracious enough to <laughs> do the opening. Yeah, well, I that's mean, the I, truth. She's on it. So <laughs> You know what? Let's take a break and let's show that. Let's yeah, just let's show, show when we come it's back. It's a short little promo. All right, it's, a, it's a great promo. All right, please don't go away. You are watching a special edition of Randall Terry, Voice of Resistance, with my friend Joseph Eddick. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program, friend. All right, we are doing crowdfunding. And part of what we have been able to do, besides having all of this paper, you saw the boxes yesterday. Oh, my goodness. It's a daunting <laughs> task, my friend. It's a daunting task. Explain what you saw to the people. I mean, I never would have realized, because, you know, so often I, I didn't, you know, all the newspaper articles when we were running for office, doing Operation Rescue, all those things. At the time, you know, I never thought, I should save all this, and I mm. didn't, you know. And I, I might have a, a box of stuff, but I mean, he's probably what you have fifty boxes in his office that are. I'm like, oh my goodness gracious! At least know? fifty boxes you know? plus four uh, file cabinets. Yeah, <clears throat> and then all the, that doesn't count all the video. That's just paper. That's just looking through articles, pictures, things like that. And so, uh, you know, I'm here for a few days. It probably won't be enough. So. We're gonna. We're, our goal is to sort through it all and try and get a storyline. But anyway, one of the things that we did was years ago, thirty-four years ago, thirty-five years ago, I hired a camera crew to go with us to various cities and film us. <clears throat> CDR, Chris Rogers, good man, godly man, Christian, and he stored all of this footage in air-conditioned heated facility and, and so it's pristine it's three-quarter inch professional tape but tape degrades over time especially if it goes through big uh temperature changes but we have literally pristine footage of stuff that we did and you're gonna watch a few of the clips right here some of this we is not from that footage but you'll see how how great this is so anyway here we go with the dragon slayers promo piece it's called Operation Rescue, and they say that their mission is to stop what they call the murder of innocent babies, no matter what price they have to pay. Now, they're on the way to jail, and if they come back tomorrow, we'll arrest them again tomorrow, and so forth and so on. We're going to maintain law and order. We expected them to be rougher than usual, but we didn't. Understand why you put somebody in jail in America because they don't want to see babies killed. And frankly, I can't understand that either. Can you tell us how many total arrests were there today? 591. They aren't in Kansas anymore. Today, the anti-abortion group Operation Rescue and pro-choice supporters are drawing battle lines in Buffalo. Nearly 2,000 people have turned out at this church just northeast of Buffalo to pray and to plan, calling on the name of God to bless their efforts to rescue unborn babies. Lord God, tonight as we lift up our hands to you. We as a church and individuals needed to repent 
of our lack of involvement on trying to stop the killing of innocent children. We are not going down there as the heroes. We are going down there in a spirit of repentance. We are guilty. The blood is on our hands. We're 15 years late. There's no heroes here. We are more guilty than the police when they take us away because the police are not called to be the salt of the earth. We are. Mike, I know that the mayor of Buffalo, as you mentioned last night on Nightly News, practically invited the demonstrators from Operation Rescue. What does it mean to love my neighbor as myself? Well, according to the Good Samaritan, it means that if your neighbor is in danger of death, dying in the ditch, you save him. We're going down to a killing center today. Many of you are placing yourself in a vulnerable position. You might be hurt. And this man's severely fractured arm. But if you begin to suffer, you must still do nothing wrong. It's getting arrested too radical. It's obvious it, it can't be too radical in the face of mass murder. You are as safe in jail as you are in the protective hands of God any place else. The mercies of God are everlasting and are new every morning, and you see them in jail in a way that you never do any other place. I was arrested over 50 times, uh, in jail over 50 times. The one thing that it has done is to bring this issue a little bit more clearly before the minds of other people. Media coverage is critical to bringing your message out to the public, to the masses. Finally, there are Christians by the hundreds who are putting their bodies and their freedom on the line to save innocent children and to create the social tension that was so desperately needed. Operation Rescue is a new and a fresh breath of air. Politicians never see the light until they feel the heat. There was a Monday in America where you could own a slave, and then the following Monday, you could not. And I don't think that many hearts were changed between those two Mondays. What was changed was the law. We're saving children and mothers today. We're doing it in such a way that will provide the political clout to change the laws tomorrow. And we will launch an equal force against state legislatures to ship away at Roe and to ultimately make child killing illegal again. I am convinced Roe will fall and child killing will be driven back to hell where it came from. Now you can see why we have to make it. I'm going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll tell some war stories. And hopefully you will be inspired to give. If you do give a gift of any amount, you can go to the Give, Send, Go page. This is my latest book, just came out, called Divine Correction, How God Gets a Nation's Attention. We will send you a copy of this book. Go to the Give, Send, Go page and make a contribution, and we will send you Divine Correction. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the program, friend. Story time. Wichita. Wow. Yes, Wichita. Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. Well, we went to Wichita back in what? It was that 1991? It was summer of 91. And um, our goal when we had all the little leadership meetings, you know, via conference call in those days, no Zoom, none of that kind of stuff. And we were deciding on a city to go to, and we ended up with Wichita for various reasons. And and we said, okay, we'll do a five-day, basically a one-week uh you know, rescue in Wichita, remember? And 30 days later, we were going home to our wives. And so we ended up staying. It was oh, mostly the whole summer, wasn't it? Well, then we came back, and, uh, you know, I came back for. Well, why some did things, we stay? But well, we'll tell we the, stayed what? because we closed down Tiller. And Tiller, um, George Tiller. At the Tiller time, the Killer. Tiller the Killer was the um, third trimester abortionist in the country. And it was a disgusting place. And we decided to just 
put a siege onto his facility. And uh, when we got there, um, we kept him closed for the whole first week. You know, the you know the mayor and all these people were meeting with him. Hey, please just come on. This is getting crazy. We had so many people in town, and you know he decided, okay, he would go along with the closing. The closing. We did not know that, so we were there every day, even though he was closed. And uh, but I think if we weren't, it kept the pressure on. He wouldn't have stayed closed. So we decided to stay on. And there's two other abortion mills in the city, and we. You know, we had enough people. We were at all those, and we had rallies every night at the hotel, six, 700, 800 people. And uh, then out, out in the streets, well, we had 2,700 arrests in Wichita alone. 2,700 arrests. We called it the Summer of Mercy. That's right. And we originally, we were only going to stay for five days, but when he closed, we thought, well, heck, let's just keep staying. And then it just ignited, became spontaneous, and people were coming in from all over the country. Literally all over, flying, driving. One David Dry came in with his bus. Oh yeah, and then we had our final uh, rally. Yeah. We had at a stadium, thirty thousand people uh, for our final rally. So Pat yeah. Robertson spoke. Yeah, I ended up speaking. I was in jail. In you know they put us in jail two hours out of the city to keep. <laughs> people away and uh you know we had a patch in from the the uh pay phone in the jail i was able to speak to the rally from the jail it's kind of cool kinda that cool. is so cool yeah. i did not get to speak at yeah. the rally at all you were gone already you yeah did. i yes. the judge kelly we all told both me. got arrested you were i was coming down the elevator they got me they got you at a uh what was it you were you doing a, a radio show i can't remember, can't remember what you were me doing. up but he got keith i think was doing a radio show uh, I think they got Pat coming in on an airplane, and because uh, he they stuffed me he, in jail. Oh, because he we tore up the judge's order. That was it, Judge Robert Kelly. Yes, Judge Kelly. He issued an order saying, "Don't do this," uh, you know, "Go home" or whatever it was. Right. Threatening pastors to take to churches, and, and we never paid too close of attention to those things. We we burned it up. I went yeah. on the TV and said, as far as I'm concerned, Judge Kelly can use this as toilet paper. Yeah. And then I ripped it up. That was I didn't burn that one. I ripped yeah. it up. <laughs> oh, and at the end of the event, you know, and he saw it. He yeah. saw it on TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they saw everything we were doing. And at the end of the event, you know, when I got put in for ten days in the, I forgot what county I was in, but they, um, uh, Jay Seculo got me out eventually. But he agreed that I wouldn't come back. I did not know he agreed to that. I came back. They arrested me coming. In off of the airplane, I never even put my foot on Wichita soil, and I was taken down the tarmac onto a, a federal marshal's car and off to jail. And that was another Those fun time. Those were the days, so, my friend. I wrote my book, Why Does a Nice Guy Like Me Keep Getting Thrown in Jail, when I was a federal prisoner in Wichita. That's when I wrote that book. Okay. I've got to take a break. We'll be right back. Go to randallterry.com. Watch the promo video and go to Give, Send, Go and make a contribution, please, so that we can make this documentary. Don't go away. Welcome back, friend. We need to do this documentary. And there's two reasons. One is the history needs to be preserved, needs to be told. How did we get to where Roe was overturned? It would not have happened without this incredible movement. But perhaps more importantly, we want to inspire the future. The, the young people today, not only do they not know what happened, but this level of activism, this level of passion, courage, sacrifice, dedication is sadly lacking right now. And we've, we've got to revive it. Absolutely. Absolutely do. I mean, they may not be able to do what we did simply because of the face and the different laws that have been enacted, but there's so much that you can do. I mean, I work with young people. They're out on the streets all the time. Uh, I mean, it is, you know, activism is alive and well. We just need more people understanding it, that it's a viable and necessary element of the pro-life movement. You can't just be writing letters and, you know, twit and tweeting and doing all the things that they do today and think that they're activists. You got to get out there. You got to tell it like it is. You got to show the dead babies. You have to make it, you know, the uh, population aware. And that's what changed the hearts back in the days we of We created Russia. social that's tension. That's right. And uh, that has to happen and happen aggressively. And there's a lot of good organizations out there that are doing great work. And um, we just want to help encourage them and, and, you know, encourage others to get involved. Friend, there are five elements to every major social revolution. 
We have radical rhetoric. You have incendiary images. You have aggressive action. You have serious sacrifice. And then finally, you have verifiable victory. All right? Women can vote everywhere. No one can own a slave. No children are dying in coal mines. Child labor is illegal. No segregation exists. It was total victory in each of these movements. We need total victory in the pro-life movement. But each of those movements that I mentioned had this intense group. It was Samuel Adams, I believe, who said, you do not need a majority to prevail. You need an irate minority, keen to set fire in the minds of men. <laughs> yeah. That's why we need this documentary. Absolutely. Please go. And if you go to RandallTerry.com, right on the top of the page, there's a button that says Dragon Slayers. Click that. It'll take you right to the crowdfunding page. I'm asking you to be as generous as you can. Joe, thank you for being here, buddy. My pleasure. Time went by too and fast. you got to get that book. That is one of the best books I told Randall that he's written that I've ever read. All right. Divine Correction, it's yours for a gift of any size. God bless you.